by course is clear at Mountain Zero. You're clear to release your next bike. At Tower Zero, Roger, bike 235 on course. Copy, 235 away. Hello, this is Drew Gatewood once again out at the beautiful and historic Bonneville Salt Flats. We've just completed the 2011 Bub Motorcycle Speed Trials with a record amount of runs, I might add. There's a record for us. Never before have that many bikes gone up and down that salt in the five-day race. And that race is very busy and held together by a group that we finally refer to as the Volunteers, the Red Shirts. They work very hard to keep the whole thing going. So this year, instead of making a song about motorcycles or the riders and engine parts, I've opted to dedicate this strictly to the volunteers. And if you're one of them watching this, it's for you. So it goes like this. set up on a proper road in that that avoids the the lagoon yeah. okay but so also just, far enough over that you're not like right. driving right next to the zero because right. those three cones on this course right yeah. down there were the zero right yeah. hi i'm darren maltzberger from mitchell technical institute in mitchell south dakota and i teach motorcycle technology it's a two-year associate degree program I uh, brought four students. I have four students here with me. I have seven out here on the Bonneville Salt Flats for the land speed trials by Bub. Uh, these students are volunteers all week, helping with racing and experiencing the, the thrill of speed and power firsthand. So the middle row is going to go between where those cones are. Uh -huh. I think that could be our second bank. It's kind of hard for me to judge the distance. Yeah. It doesn't matter how old they are. All of a sudden, they're 12 years old. So every guy, every racer that comes up to this window is 12 years old because this is the happiest place on earth. And so they'll come up and they'll say, I want to go again. I want to go again. So it's $50. We put another wristband around their wrist, and that entitles them to go down the salt again. And um, what we do is we encourage them next year maybe go for AMA, go for a national record. And then that way they get the unlimited runs and they don't have to continue to pay $50 per run. And it also encourages them to, to push themselves and their machine a little bit more and maybe get that national record and get, get themselves in the record books. Um, because we're not, you know, we're, we're making history here. And that's what's really important is these people are, they're coming up to the window. If they have a blue folder, that means that they're going for a world record. There's a lot more involved with that. Um, there's more paperwork. There's more, um, more things that they have to do to qualify to, to get a world record. It's a very big deal. So anybody with a blue folder, you know, is going for a world record. A yellow folder means that they're going for a national record. Um, and again, um, 
it doesn't matter what color their folder is, every single person that comes up to this window is a racer. So I tell them that because a lot of these people that come up here are red folder guys. You know, I, um, I had one guy who came up and he says, you know what, I've been wanting to come out here since I was seven years old. And I said, well, ha happy 65th birthday. Let's get you out on the salt. And he was just giddy. He was almost crying. And, you know, we make, we make the magic happen and it's just, it's just such a wonderful thing. Um, we had another writer who, he's been coming out, he was the very first Runwich Brown who came out here. And uh, he's been wanting to go 100 miles an hour. And last year he went 100 miles an hour. And so, you know, again, he's 12 years old and he's kneeling in the salt and he is weeping because he got his bike over 100 miles an hour. But I mean, that's, that's what we do is, is um, we make the magic happen. What we're doing is my marking, uh, these are, the red ones are wind flags. We put up mile markers so the drivers know that where they're exactly at all, at all times on the track. And these are just for wind, the red ones. And the mile markers are, they run certain courses. Uh, some are, this is two mile, build up one mile, etc., etc. Bottom line. been coming out here Ed and what do you do as a day job? I'm retired and to answer that question and I, I've been coming out here about eight years I run Bub and SCTA uh, Speed Week. And what keep, makes you keep coming back? When I was warned when I first came out here by the lady at the gate said don't go out there and I said why and she said because you will get bit in the following year I was back here with a motorcycle. True story. And where are you from? And you're a volunteer? Yep, I'm a volunteer. Uh, I'm from Murdo, South Dakota. And I go to school at Mitchell Tech for power sports. And we came out here to help out with the races and get a good experience and meet a lot of cool people that come race down the salt flats. Time? Uh, I'm from Winter, South Dakota. And yeah, this is my first time out here, all of our first times. It's a good experience so far. I'm from a little town, Bonesteel, South Dakota. And first time out here, go to school at Mitchell. And it's all right, it's hot. <laughs> It'd be something to be fun to do again in the future. <clears throat> Just wait till the bikes start happening. Yeah, yep. probably come back again sometime. Carl Reaver from Crystal Lake, Illinois, and never been here before, always wanted to come out and see Bonneville and see the speed trials and that type of thing, and this is basically a dream come true, being able to come out here and actually be a part of it, too. So I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Ken Zerwinski, I'm from Huntley, Illinois. Uh, Carl and I rode our motorcycles out here, and uh, I volunteered here last year and I had a great time and uh, I couldn't wait to come back. Um, last year I worked on the uh, mile four of the mountain course and uh, it was an excellent experience. Uh, I recommend it to anybody. So. Uh... Is, is I'm wind rowing the part the the salt the fines so I have just enough to migrate it across the salt and I hope I can you know and then when we wheel pack it I think it'll be all right I think you guys to get everything set up two days the uh Timing stands the simple part. The harder part is just setting up all of the um, uh, sensors out on the track. Pin over here. So you got today and tomorrow to do that. Yep.
we want them to finish doing most of the dragging on the track before we set out our sensors and wires. Makes sense. So we'll get everything done here first. Because he's got to do the That's all the camo, isn't it? Yeah. Let's do a little See what's Son. This is my son, Clayton. Hi, Clayton. Oh, this, this is how fast have you gone, Betty? I set a record at 263 miles an hour. She just couldn't get that 264. For a <laughs> this Hi, is Clayton. Rex. Rex. He's gone 950. No, well, I'm 265. I think I finally Fire. got going faster than Betty. This year. You know how him? fast? 265. No, no, you didn't. How fast did you? What was your exit? 265. What was your exit? I don't remember the. I didn't do the exit because I didn't go through the last mile. All right. But my highest middle mile was 265 and 261, average to 260. Was that in the Studebaker? Or? No, that was in George Fields' George's long car. black comp oh, coupe with half a comp. Hemi. The decal broke. Let's go. get a shot of this baby. <laughs> Farmers all the way. <laughs> God, the car was just wouldn't stay on the track. It was left, right. It pulled the chute, wiggled around, and hmm. turned out. And here comes Kennedy, and he goes, Wow, that wind was pushing you around. I'm going, what wind? <laughs> Took my helmet off and <laughs> yeah, what wind? It was, it was right through the saddle here, heading out towards blown. low. It was terrible. I'm Betty Berkland. I live in Great Falls, Montana, and I'm crazy salt nut. Love to be here. So I got started helping Rex and my son Tom, and Rex and Tom are starters, and I help them, and I come a day early and help lay out the track. So that's me. <laughs> Uh, Kari Amundsen. I'm currently residing in Missoula, Montana. I uh, ride motorcycles with, with Rex and last year was here for Speed Week. Enjoyed it so much that I wanted to be here for this week with the motorcycles and volunteering and I'm sure I'll be back every year after this. Having a great time. What we're doing out here is we set cones out so we can get a straight vertical line from one end to the other. So when we put our flags in, they're all the same. So we don't have a snake going course like this. So we've set the cones up, then we come back and we have our wind flags and our mile markers that we set in place and they're all straight from zero all the way out. At 10 miles distance, if we're a foot off there, we're four miles off over here. Welcome back for those um, that have been coming back for years and years, and welcome to the new folks that are out here. Thankfully, we have a lot of um, repeat volunteers, so that is awesome because it makes all of our jobs a lot easier. Less training, and we get going and, and running faster. So, a um, couple of points. First thing we're going to do is go over a couple of uh, things that I need to, just as uh, uh, information for you. Then uh, we will get your per diems and your, your swag bags. For those that need stuff, t-shirts, there's t-shirts in there. Um, there's also some goodies that we've got from our sponsors and all that sort of stuff. And of course, a complimentary Bob Speed Trials t-shirt, which we think looks really, really awesome this year. Pre-stage assistance, make sure you get a written copy of who goes, bike numbers, and then call it in for the tower on the admin channel, just like we've always done. Parts falling off, call that in. You know, bike by two, misfiring something like that. And that gives us a heads up as to what may be happening, especially the streamliners. When we run the fast motorcycles and streamliners, we'll call out, I'll call out and Tom will, and we like to have uh, minimum radio traffic. As soon as that bike's on course, no chatter. There'll be some comebacks, and the comebacks are basically you get, you get part way through the scrutineering process and you find a problem with it, and you say, well, I'll hold on to your paperwork. You just need to get metal valve caps or whatever. You know, go get them, come back up here, come find me or come find a scrutineer and there'll be a number order. Um, run what you brung, go in there, and then we got, you know, 900 and lower, 901 and higher.
is put water on it and then see what we can do to make the long course better. Okay? I tell you guys because this is the information center of the salt flats. You guys are the ones that talk to everybody and that's what I wanted to do. Is get Now, is it going to work? <laughs> Nobody's ever done it. Okay. We'll, we'll know but I tell you what, it's better than us sitting here and crying and moaning about it. Okay? And blaming somebody else about it. Let's just do it. Okay, so that's the word. And one other thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. And our photographer, here he is right here, has been coordinating a whole CD about you guys. <laughs> this is the year of the volunteer. Every year has been the year of the volunteer, but this year we're going to especially talk about the volunteer, because without you guys, it doesn't happen. Thank you. Now, hope for more water.